Hi guys, we've got Apex Solar with us today and Tim Baker looks after the Port Macquarie, the Tari kind of area. So there's a lot of regional um, solar in there and he's been doing it for a long, long time. So let's find out what are the local challenges. Hi, Tim. Welcome to our podcast at UN Energy Answers. Thank you, Marcus. Right. Look, we're really interested because now solar at the moment, it's very much in the news. We've just heard about the battery rebate in New South Wales. Good news and bad news, isn't it? What, what do they say? The road to hell is paved with good intention. That's right. That sounds about right. A normal gov government initiative. <laughs> I mean, we, we hear about there's a battery rebate coming, but anybody who's been involved in the rebate game for a while knows that as soon as a rebate is announced, people wait till it comes through. Yeah, unfortunately. That's right. So, of course, of course you would. And then customers going to look and wait until they've got that, that rebate in the hand, which is... Several months away. That's right. So they basically killed at the moment battery sales for the sake of doing more battery sales. Yes. Duh. Yes. So how did you find it at the moment? How's battery sales overall? Are you getting decent inquiries just before this great initiative? We are getting good. It's It's, it's been fairly consistent for us with lots of people looking to go down the battery path and, and you know, maximising their self-sufficiency overall. Um the battery rebate, obviously. Look, there's been a lot of talk about this for years and years, and now this has come to New South Wales. So uh, we'll be keen to know some more details when they come available, of course. But look, we're hoping it's going to be a positive thing, uh, much like the original STC rebate was. Um, there was a lot of question marks and things happening, uh, even even prior to that, the old uh, seven or eight thousand dollar federal government grant way back um, mm -hmm. that's when I started that was that was out at the time so look overall I think it has been a positive uh, impact for solar as a rule and we're hoping this will be similar but it's yeah we're right in the early stages now so mm -hmm. time will tell I mean look normally these rebates are really kind of accompanied with some rules such as income related rules etc cetera, etc cetera. and also a lot of people might think they can add a battery to a relatively small system so if you would start trying to educate somebody there's a battery rebate coming i want a battery what are the prerequisites that i need actually on my roof to make the battery work well of course the number one thing is if you've got a battery you need to be able to charge it now, you want to charge that ideally from your solar power, right? Mm. You don't want to pay grid feed power to charge your battery. Mm. So uh, the solar capacity, extra solar capacity on your roof to cover obviously what you're using in the daytime, which is what most people have got now. But then you're also looking to be able to charge that battery uh, basically every day to really get the maximum value out of that and and maximising your self-sufficiency. So would you say you really got to have a five kilowatt system as a minimum to start really worthwhile for a battery? That, that's probably a pretty good starting point um, mm. as a minimum. Uh, of course, it does depend because everyone is different. Um, solar and batteries especially are a lot more involved as far as getting – it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. We do need to look at what you're doing now, what you're likely to do in the future, um, and be able to cater for those um, eventuations. And uh, electrification of the home moving forward. So you don't believe in the kind of, I'll just check you out and then just give you two or three tick box systems? You Look, that's always going to be out there, but it's um, it's it's really not the case um, with a battery system. It's if you want to extract the best value for money and and maximize your self sufficiency. Um, everyone's different, and how we use energy in from each house in the neighborhood is is can be vastly different and it has been in my experience so you do like bespoke solutions you really check out their consumption and go through all those details yeah absolutely of course we're looking at um, it depends on the information we've got available but now you know looking at bills and um, asking a lot of uh, general questions that's that's a minimum starting point for us and um, you know look we ask people for example how long they're planning to be where they are is this a, is this a long-term home or is it are they going to be here for five years? There's a question mark. Look, a lot of the time people don't know the answers, of mm. course, to this. This is all in the future stuff, but that's what we're doing as part of this solar and especially the battery systems is looking at what what they're doing now and the past, but also very importantly the future mm. um, what mm. and uh, what that's going to bring. 
Right, right. So let's go back right to the start. So Apex Solar, how did you start? Why did you pick the name? Give me a bit of background. I started, I suppose, I dabbled with some off-grid solar way back around about 2008 um, for a friend of mine who was living very remotely with a tiny, tiny little system and um, helped him out. I was obviously an electrician at the time but uh, thought this was a, a, a new and exciting sort of technology uh, that's uh, probably going to become a big thing. Um, the 60 cents scheme in New South Wales started and of course that went from a little trickle to a flood very quickly. Uh, so then the little the little uh, sort of side hustle of solar became um, much more of a a breadwinner for mm -hmm. us and look now we're we're uh, exclusively doing solar that's all we do there's no electrical <laughs> bits on the side it's just the supply and demand um, a lot of a lot of technology and a lot of changes in the years I've been doing it from from when it started tiny little panels that cost as much as a car <laughs> to uh, you know very very good very capable systems now and um, obviously that's going to continue into the future I'd say so what do you support uh, residential commercial off grid we do predominantly residential on and off grid um, we do a little bit of commercial we're not in our particular demographic and area, there's a majority of residential customers, mm -hmm. of course. That's our main gig is uh, doing the residential. But, yeah, definitely um, we look at uh, more of the – probably more of the rural customers with their unique needs, and it is. The bushfires we've had, we've had floods. It's Australia, so we get a bit of everything. And those challenges bring different needs and wants from people. Uh, first thing that happens in a bushfire is all the grid stops working and you don't realise that until it happens. And so then all of a sudden all your backup plans for pumps and irrigation when the fires come go out the window. So having the ability to have a mini off-grid system uh, became a large priority for a lot of people and the challenges of a rural customer are unique and they are different to, to people just in in the suburbs. Of course, we do that very much so, but, um, yeah, we do sort of specialise in the, in the off-grid rural segment. Right. So basically somebody walks in, says, look, I'm interested in solar, you look at them, if they are maybe in a bush, bushfire prone zone, you might actually recommend that they have a safe battery backup to basically help them out in those hours of needs. Absolutely. It's, it's another, it's a big value add for customers in that situation. So they're obviously looking at a battery system that's going to save them money. There's a financial benefit there, but they have a massive benefit, which is a peace of mind that they've got energy security. So if they do have, you know, Potential, um, yeah. Flooding or... Flooding and fires and famine. Yes. They have uh, a system that's going to keep them operational. They can they can run water pumps and internet and mm. TVs and stay connected and keep informed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's um, I know from customers who went through this experience, uh, particularly with the fires, that it was um, uh, a massive benefit to be able to have that energy security. You probably could call it a lifesaver in some instances, really. Absolutely. Because, I mean, it, if you can save your house because you've got water to pump and, and, and prevent the embers for causing damage, that's a, that's a huge business. Oh, it benefit. is. And look, I know personally we had um, phone towers not working for days. Uh, mm. There was no connection to the world. <laughs> you, Everyone takes for granted uh, nowadays being connected 24-7. Uh, but when... The power's been out for days and days with these kind of catastrophic, catastrophic events. Then you're really back to the good old days and uh, sending carrier pigeons. So mm -hmm. when, when you've got the ability to keep keep all keep your connections going, keep your internet on, and and stay connected, you also know what's going on. So a mm -hmm. lot of people through that period that were completely living in the dark. Mm -hmm. You would obviously therefore know quite a bit about battery technology. Have they changed a lot and what do you recommend? Oh, massively changed. The old um, lead-acid batteries that used to be, I think the last, last lead-acid system we did, there was two and a half tonnes worth of lead-acid batteries to run a normal household. Um, look, they're a very solid 
good old technology and they're still around. The telecoms love them because they know exactly how they perform. But we're obviously moving with technology and, and lithium is our go-to uh, at the moment. Some of the benefits uh, is obviously the power density. We've, we You don't need an entire dedicated room just to store your batteries. <laughs> you can have a nice little unit sat over in the corner mm. um, that looks great and, and performs very well. You've got lots of um, energy available. The modularity, so expansion, future-proofing there, being able to add capacity now or in the future, uh, that's a great, great addition, particularly for batteries and, and the ever-evolving you know, needs of power and how people are choosing to live their life now. I mean, I'm not shy to mention some brands. What are you specifically in battery space? What do you work with? Well, we love the Fronius BYD combo um, very much. We use SunGrow, uh, SunGrow inverters and batteries. And, of course, our probably our favourite really is the uh, Selectronic Power Plus combination, both Australian-made products and mm. uh, very much world beaters there. That's our go-to for off-grid products. Um, the other the other combinations are very popular for the hybrid on grid systems. Mm -hmm. But yeah. what about the the one that in the city everybody wants to show off with the Teslas? Do you like them? Do you use them? We don't use Tesla a lot. We are accredited for installation of Tesla. Um, I'm looking forward to the new version. Um, my take, I don't. <sighs> The, the non-modularity of a Tesla is one of its downfalls now. I find it's kind of an older technology. Um, it's got a fantastic name, right, and they do have fantastic support and they've got by far the best app you'll ever come across. They're a great product, but I just find that we uh, the, 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 having the ability to tailor it with that modular battery to say, well, not, not everyone needs a 13.5 kilowatt hour mm, battery mm, mm. Um, and or you might for a clean slate uh, greenfield home, you'd be looking at solar, inverter, battery, and you can get better value for money uh, than a Tesla system. So mm -hmm. it's always an option. We don't use it a lot. Right. So what you're really saying is that the batteries that come, let's say, in a 2.6 kilowatt hour stack version, you can then more clearly make the size of the battery more ideally to what the customer needs rather than the Tesla who only comes in 13.6 and then if you want to go up, well, you add another 13.6, so you're now 27 and not every customer needs it. Some customer might want to have about 17 and it's very hard to get to 17 with the Tesla but it's not that hard with um, batteries that come in stack versions. That's 100% right. It's um, Look, I know personally we have... Some customers who have a five kilowatt hour battery and that sees them in the high 90% self-sufficiency. Um, that additional 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla would be money, they've spent money on a product they're never going to see the value of. They're, n they're not using most of that capacity. Oh, oh, um, oh, oh, oh. What about that dinner party where you can show off the light at night? It's, <laughs> you see the hue in the garden there from the Tesla. It's true. It's true. There's, I mean, you know, fantastic bragging rights, that's for sure. And, uh, yeah, you can show everyone your app and that they're, they're great at that, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think you're trying to create more value for the real customer. Got it. Okay. Now, what's more important? Um, do you get customers who really always want the best price or do you go for the best product or how do you – what's your sales approach? Oh, the best product at the best price, of course. <laughs> so, um, look, we're, uh, we, we are an older company now and have therefore narrowed down our product range through, through experience. Um, we have – tried a lot of products out there and of course it is high tech and it's always evolving but we find by narrowing our selection now and offering products which we know we will get support from and we know number one function well and are very reliable um, you'll get the best system now I look at these solar's really an investment for a minimum of 10 years realistically systems now should be lasting for probably 20 years um, there's a lot of uh, equipment. It doesn't have a definitive life. Batteries are the only exception there. But um, if you've got a system that's going to last for 20 years, you want to get you want to do it once and do it well, right? And you get what you pay for, of course. So a two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollar solution. You don't think I'll get still big bucks out of it in 20 years time? I wouldn't feel comfortable. <laughs> 
that that would be the case. <laughs> you're, you're being very polite here. <laughs> I've had people swear at that point in time. <laughs> <laughs> look, it is. It's um, it's it's different for everyone, but uh, look, it's like anything else. It is if the price is too good to be true, there's often some catches there. Yeah, um, okay. We've pulled out a lot of, we've replaced a lot of systems that uh, were on that sort of price bracket. Right, right, right. Do you can fix them then, or is it? It's basically a non-fixer and if you can't fix it, why not? Look, it depends. At the end of the day, um, a lot of these – anything's possible, okay, but uh, it's whether the the value is there in repairing an old, cheap, broken system or if it's going to be better in the long run to start from scratch. But um, a lot of times the cable run has been compromised a little bit and you take all the responsibility legally for that system. So I find a lot of quality installers say, look, if it's that cheap and now this and this is gone, I really don't feel economically it's worth it to fix it. No, 100%. We, um, we, are, we do take uh, the liability for a, a system if, as soon as we go there and touch it. So mm-hmm. that's why we're very uninclined to be repairing nasty old cheap broken systems. I've seen lots of horrible ones with smoke coming out because the system was left out under a shed roof with no gutters on it and rain pouring down mm, it. Mm. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do with that. Um, so you do have to have a look and make a call. We will always try and help a customer that contacts us, but um, we have to make sure it's safe, number mm, one, mm. and that it's going to be reliable, especially if we're looking at it and putting our name to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, in your part of the world, to be very blunt, finding a really good quality installer that can build something that you can hang your nail on and for 10 years as an off-grid, maybe just works away and just hangs in there, it must actually not be that easy to find good quality labour in the country sometimes. Let me think about it. <laughs> no, but I mean, do you find it hard sometimes even to get your own staff and things like that? And I mean, do you feel... The, I'm, I'm going to bring plant here now, but if I walk, if I if Apex Solar walks into your house, and you propose a really good smart solution that's not the cheapest, but maybe in the long run makes the most money for them, and somebody wants to go for something cheap, at that point in time, you really can't help the customer. No, that's right. I mean, we can't we can't do everything. We don't we don't we pick the products we pick, and there's a cost associated with them. Look, with a solar system, especially with a battery system. The vast majority of your cost comes down to the components that you're putting into that, and 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 they're a set price. Our installation is a small part of that, but it's a very important part. Mm-hmm. Like we, and we specifically choose the products that we install for for these reasons. We we get fantastic support from the suppliers and the manufacturers. So the warranty has a meaning, not just a piece of paper. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Um, look, the the primary reason the products we pick is. We rarely need to contact the companies for warranty claims. Mm. Uh, we, we're not in the business of fixing broken solar systems. <laughs> we want to install them. We want to do it once and we want to do it well. And then go forward, not looking the back rear. 100%. I know a lot of solar system companies who's installed maybe a product that they thought was okay and then suddenly they're getting the huge failures and the company behind the product doesn't back them, then it comes all out of their hip pocket. Absolutely, it makes no sense selling it's cheap crap. No, and that's correct. It's like we we're not um, we're not a massive multinational manufacturer of electronic products. Mm. So those companies that we're buying, massive multi million dollar companies, we expect some support as a little supplier in regional New South Wales putting them in. And if we don't get that support, we'll go looking elsewhere. Of course. So that's it's very important that that we as a customer for their suppliers and our customers get that reliable backup when when it's needed. Mm-hmm. Now, have installations changed over the last 10, 15 years? And if so, how? Well, obviously, I think they've got um, – there's a lot more technology involved. I think the, the quality of the systems has greatly increased. Um, we've got – of course, the online monitoring of everything nowadays, everything's just default connected up to your internet and um, we can get some really valuable information out of that. Plus, really simplify the any fault finding process or repairs, etc. when we can just hop online and see all the fault codes and mm. get the uh, appropriate 
repair response underway almost immediately. Um, that's really a great thing. So, look, I think overall, obviously, they're getting larger too. So solar systems, as a rule, you know, 1.5 kilowatt systems What uh, in 2010. Uh, I'd argue now we're, the standard system's almost got around about 10 kilowatts worth of panels. So um, a lot bigger and a lot more functionality out of them. Uh, and, and people are really looking to maximise self-sufficiency. But it's also because solar as a whole, panels, inverters have become much cheaper. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's been obviously the the federal government STC rebate still applies and it's very helpful um, with, the, with the solar installation on its own. But um, now with the batteries, obviously there hasn't been any New South Wales battery rebates to date mm. uh, up until this announcement. So we're waiting with bated breath to see what happens with that. Some people are still cynical about solar and does solar really save you money? It can. Um, it certainly should. Uh, so it, 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 of course, you need to know how it operates and that uh, comes down to the installer as much as anything else to give you, the customer, a clear explanation of what it can and can't do. Um, but look, solar is absolutely a fantastic investment financially if um, if you use it correctly. There's, there's, it's a it's an absolute win-win. It's a, it's a no-brainer. So having that sunshine directly from your roof to power your house um, day and night now with a battery system, um, yeah, it's there's it's power prices are only going to continue to go up. I'd say, mm. and being able to be almost non-reliant on the on the grid and the energy retailers. Um, that's the way of the future. So what do you see on average saving? Is it a $500 a year or $2,000 a year? What what are the kind of range? Yeah, look, it, it, there is a large range there and it depends what your bills were to start with. But it's, it's pretty comfortable to be, most people are looking at a couple of thousand dollars off just for a solar system um, on, on a yearly electricity bill. Mm -hmm. So that will obviously continue to fluctuate with electricity prices. As they go up, the savings will and should also increase as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, I mean, I hear, but basically, because we now need to get these solar farms done and the big transmission lines coming, going into the cities and stuff, that's all cost to the electricity infrastructure that will add to future electricity price rises. Yeah. So if you buy solar now, you're basically avoiding that particular bullet. That's right. So it's always a case of uh, we've got had customers that say we, we looked at this five years ago or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it then and we should have, but we're going to do it now. And it's like it's always been the case. It's it's an investment. So the, the sooner you're in, the sooner you'll start saving basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, look, I think the, the grid's going to have – the grid needs a lot of time and money to – bring it up to the standard it needs to be at and that's going to cost everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, I would say to people nowadays, don't buy a puzzle solar system. Do you know what I mean with a puzzle solar system? Multiple bits from lots of different places. <laughs> that's right. I would argue get one good supplier to start off with to build you the foundation with a strong solar system and then build on top. And what are the next steps that would come after you put solar on? Well, that's exactly right. The the technology available and the systems that we can install now, you've got a lot of boxes that you can tick and a lot of future proofing that's built into those, uh, adding the batteries on, adding an EV charger, adding a backup power supply, um, the option to increase your solar capacity. There's lots of things there and we can really tailor make it so that you can buy a system that allows you to add these at a reasonable cost as well. Without, and, so and, you, and it's not a lot of – it's one master system, not a whole bunch of puzzle pieces, as you mentioned. So if you walk in, you supply the solar, you might already discuss with the customer to move into the battery as the next and in five years' time he's having an EV and you work out how the EV charger goes. So you're kind of having a full picture of what is needed – rather than using company A for the best price here, company B for the best price there, and then suddenly all the stuff doesn't work that well together. Oh, absolutely. So people's needs will often dictate the system that we'll be recommending to them. Mm -hmm. And it's not a case of we, we're asking a customer a lot of questions as part of the quoting process 
to find out what it is that they that they want or need mm. and then make recommendations based upon that. Mm. So, um, yeah, having the ability to expand and add or cater for what your future needs may be is very important. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a sample where maybe somebody wanted to go with something really cheap and you explain to them what possibly the outcome will be, that the company is going to be not around, the support is not going to be there, the system's going to fail, they're going to call you again, wanted you to fix it, you look at it and think, well, is this really worth fixing? It's installed really poorly. And you've actually managed to convince them that going the proper way was the better way to go? Does that happen? Yeah, I think so. I think off grids would be the one there. Okay, um, personally, I've, I can think of those off the top of my head. Off grid systems when people see a great system online and it's wonderful and cheap and um, comes in a box. Yeah, you unbox it and you just get your electrician to bolt it on the wall. Uh, you need to explain to people. Well, you have to ask the question: How important is your energy supply? Because this system will most likely not give you a very reliable supply. So if it's just a little cottage at the air on the weekend once a month, that may be fine. But if it's a, if it's a home that's full-time occupied, um, that's not going to be the case. You're going to want a reliable supply and that's where you're really going to need to spend some money to get that good quality product that will, that will give you the and, and, result. and the and the company that sizes it correctly and yeah. all that extra bits, isn't it? You can't just buy something out of a box and expect it to work for everyone. Mm -hmm. So you do with off grid. Obviously, would have to work out very much what the needs of the families are, and size the system correctly. That's probably very very important, is it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're seeing that uh, now, even with the on grid battery systems, because they are. We treat them, I treat them in a way that's um, you know, similar to an off-grid system. So we're not just showing up with your solar panels and bolting them onto the roof. There's a whole mm. bunch of questions of what you're using electrically and, and trying to cover those demands. So you're basically trying to size it so that they minimise their use for the grid, is it? Absolutely. Mm. And do you do hot water as well, like heat pumps and stuff, or is, you, is that a, a partner company or what's the we, story we, there? We offer advice. We don't in, we don't do plumbing, mm. but we certainly uh, do a lot of uh, hot water upgrades, catch powers, um, or incorporating a hot water system. Hot water system is a large proportion of people's uh, on grid power demands, mm. often twenty to fifty percent. So it's fairly crucial to consider that, and be that heat pumps, solar hot water, or even the old electric storage tanks. Just incorporating the solar system to to automate that system to maximise your self sufficiency. So what you're really saying is, if in the middle of the day you're not using much solar, have your uh, electric tank, for example, uh, programmed with timers or other uh, relay related equipment to turn on and make the hot water out of your solar power, so you literally don't pay for your hot water generation. Absolutely, free hot water. It's the best kind. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, look, there's often a considerable amount of excess power in the middle of the day there and being able to divert that into hot water, mm. uh, it's a no-brainer. Now, let's say if I'm currently thinking of solar and I'm also thinking of solar and battery and there's this battery rebed coming or maybe already by then it'll be around, do, should I get solar or should I get solar and solar and battery? Definitely solar. Um, the, our recommendations presently are put put your solar system in and let's see what happens with the battery. Um, it's different for everyone, of course. Some people uh, are going to want a battery now and we can absolutely accommodate that. But mm -hmm. um, the solar rebate is still there and it reduces obviously every year, uh, the end of the calendar year. So putting a system in now and being battery ready is absolutely viable. But wouldn't you say that going forward that more and more people will go not just buying a solar system alone but will get solar and battery for the following reasons? You get less for the export nowadays. You will have a battery rebate. And I believe the price of batteries itself comes down. So wouldn't that all kind of lead to the conclusion that maybe from a sales approach recommending a solar and battery is the better way to go? Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing uh, a large percentage of customers going with the whole 
the whole system, uh, even EV chargers going in there for imminent EV purchases mm, or yeah. an EV that's already there. So mm, mm. having all of those boxes ticked is a fantastic thing. Because you do it once, do it properly, no mucking around. Um, but in terms of the, the batteries and all that, you then size them for the family home. You consider that the kids now are not teenagers but will be teenagers and there will be a higher demand. Is that all coming in or you just give them a slap bang quicker solution? No, well, look, it's, it's, we've got a size of system for we can, we can look at the, the needs of the energy usage and we can provide a system that will cover that. But there's also, you know, budgetary constraints for most people it's a very important factor so having a system that is um we we know what would be needed and then we can negotiate on try and come up with the best system that's going to match the needs versus the budgets and can some of these systems you design can they be expanded absolutely right. nearly every system we install has the option to increase or add components and options and you do get customers ring back and say listen the I'm I'm getting bigger bills again now. The teenage hot water demand is killing me, and come back and put more gear in. Is that happening? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, people people are moving toward more electrification. Yes, and uh, teenagers use a lot of power, uh, and and the increase in consumption goes up, and then we're looking for the additional batteries to cover that. Mm-hmm. How important is the efficiency of a solar panel? Because this is what I'm thinking: some roofs are just not big enough, really, to handle the EV charging when it comes, maybe with two cars, and then the electric hot water, and then the home consumption, and all of that into batteries. Um, So therefore, if I had a more efficient panel on the roof, I could theoretically get a bigger system. Hmm. So how important is efficiency of a panel? The efficiency is very important. Look, most customers now, the limitation on the system is that they're available roof space where we can actually physically install those panels. So maximising the efficiency of your panel, selecting the best one for that purpose, gives you the best option with the roof you've got to, 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 to cover all those loads. To get the biggest possible system. To get the, yeah, absolutely. So you don't have to put on the chicken shed or That's stuff right. like that. <laughs> because I worked out if you had 20 panels and you would get 30 watts more out of one panel versus another – over the 20, 25 years of the life of your system, if you charge an EV and a standard EV with it, you get 80,000 Ks more driving. So it does actually make a difference, even just a small wattage difference in the panel because they say in my country where I come from, Germany, a lot of small animals make a lot of poo too, you know. <laughs> so it all adds up, doesn't it? It does, but solar's been like that since day one. It's it's not one, one massive... Um, device to instantly stop your bills. Uh, it's it's a combination and it's a continual. It's little bits. Your your bills only your electricity bills are not massive on a daily basis, but they add up. So having that maximum efficiency and uh, the best products that last long, you will see that return on investment. But it comes back to the end customer consumer too with solar. I mean, you got to use it when it's available, isn't it? If you don't have a battery. Yeah, of course. It's you want to do things. Of course, if, if you're at home all day and you, you're working from home or you're retired, that's a lot easier. Um, the automation of things like pools and hot water systems, uh, and even putting timers on to dishwashers and yeah, I mean, washing okay. machines. Of Wash- course, modern machines they all have timers. Exactly. Most people wouldn't know how to work them, so that's possibly the challenge. <laughs> but you could easily put your washing machine ready and leave and make it turn on at eleven o'clock when you know your solar supply is really solid. Yeah, exactly. So automating and maximizing your uh, ability to run those things when the sun is shining, that's going to see the best return on investment and the most environmental advantages too. Mm. I hear a lot about these terms smart homes. Um, I'm not that smart, but what's the smart home going to be in the future like and how does solar fit into it? I think it's going to be more of these things we were speaking of, such as you know the ability to turn things on and off via the internet, et cetera, and that's going to work in very well with the solar systems, air conditioners now, you know, most people have got a new system will come with an app that you can remotely turn on your air con. So when it's a hot, sunny summer's day, you can be at work and turn your air con 
on, so when you get home, the ha- home's nice and cool. Um, and the solar paid for it. And the solar's paid for so it. So you're not cranking it up when you come home at six. Yeah, you're not coming home to an oven, you're coming home to a nice cool house. And, so. and top of it, you, you're not paying then at six o'clock the top rate. Exactly. Mm, makes a lot of sense. That's right. So that that's the smart home features that I think, well, a lot of those are available now, but that's obviously going to become more mainstream and more prevalent for all the appliances and Mm. products and, in your home. And I think a lot of people my age, when I get these gadget things, it's kind of a little bit scary sometimes. And, and I feel sometimes the user friendliness of some of this stuff really has to improve still because I don't want to sit there and press 14 buttons to time it. I want to just, I'd love the washing machine where I can say, turn on at 11 and it understands me. Do you think that'll happen one day? That's right. We need to get some more great marketing people in there working with things and not just engineers building all these No, devices. but I mean, I think AI but is no. going to give me that. Oh, for sure. Who knows? Look look at what the uh, – even when I started doing solar um, versus now, it's chalk and cheese and I'm sure technology will continue to evolve. And, yes, we'll be walking in telling our home what to do and it will do all of these things for us automatically, make life far easier and I mean, to give you a sample, I've gone into my roof where I had a very old solar system installed and the old cabling was still there and it was just normal cable, the normal electric cable, Mm -hmm. and somebody with a biro had written on it solar. Solar. That was how you used to do it. We didn't have solar cable. (laughs) We didn't have solar DC cable. That wasn't a thing, 100%. Yeah, yeah. And and a normal electrician, if you didn't see that little biro mark, he might have just cut through the thing and got DC. 600 volt. Nice. Yeah. No, absolutely. Not really nice. No, not really. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, regulations have obviously had to change with the technology there to keep up. So solar, is it much more safe now? Uh, I think so. I think, well, I think solar has always been relatively safe. It's not, it's, um, it was an unknown there. Uh, look, I'll say back in the 60 cent days, it was very much an unknown. A lot of people had questions from their insurance companies because this this high voltage DC system was going on your roof and People were wary, justifiably, but I think it's it's been around a long time now and it's it's proven itself. It's safe and it's only getting better and safer mm. overall. Now, what do you do with staff? I mean, your company sometimes might get a lot of inquiries and then less, so you've got to grow and expand and then sometimes contract again. Do you use a lot of subbies or do you use in-house staff? And what We don't sub- use any subcontractors and oh, never whoa, have. Oh, whoa, 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 nothing bad with <laughs> subcontractors are the right one. But explain the difference and what's your preference? Well, look, we've we've never used subcontractors. We always use in-house staff and that means we have – control, full control. Subcontractors are usually, in my opinion, something used by the larger companies and it's just a job that you get sent and they say off you go and let us know when it's done. We don't want that because we don't have visibility and quality control with using subcontractors. So when we keep it all in-house, we have all of the systems installed the way we want and know that they're going to work and be done properly. Can I read between the line? Can I say that Tim actually wants to do it really properly? He doesn't want you to cut corners. And when he has his own staff, he can double check that they haven't done that. But with subbies, they maybe ran away and he's staffed. That's right, yeah. <laughs> if we're paying them directly, then uh, they, they need to do what they're told basically. <laughs> no. Do you sometimes go back into systems that have been installed by your crew and kind of do a bit of a double check and get some positive surprises that they actually did exactly how you want to do it? Yeah, oh, it's absolutely great. Yeah, we do we do get that. We get a, obviously a lot of positive feedback from our customers. Um, one of the best things, we don't often see it personally, is uh, someone calls up yeah, two years later and says, well, oh, system's working fantastically well. We've hardly had a bill since then. Um, no news is good news, obviously, but a lot of the time people are going, you know, I've, I, can you, can I recommend a, a friend or can we, can we look at the batteries now? Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. it's, it's really nice getting real world positive feedback from people, um, that the system's doing everything we said it would. So your word of mouth, when you get the phone calls every day, how many, how much percentage would be customers that maybe recommend friends or come back for more? Oh, uh, it's a, it's a large proportion of our business we do a lot we do a lot of referral work friends and families or repeat customers people we get a lot of people that have um, had a system in five ten years ago and they've they've moved into a new house around the corner and 
they want us to come back and put in a new and upgraded and shiny system for them. So yeah, it's a very important thing. And with that is obviously it's our installation and our ongoing customer support that, that keeps those people coming back to us. Solar doesn't really have any moving parts. So I don't need after sale service. It just works away, doesn't it? There's a lot of electronics involved there and look like anything that's uh, electronic, it, it, it needs some attention from time to time. They are really fantastically robust and there's not a lot to do. So I don't like people thinking that this is something that's delicate and they need to be worried about it. Um, but it is something that we should occasionally look at and verify that it's working as it should be. It's there to do a job and we want to ensure it continues to do that for a, for the long term. So what, every three to four years, maybe come back, clean the panels a little bit, check everything is not rattling about, that kind of thing? That's right. Um, I mean, as simple as that. And even now, as I said, with this, with our online monitoring of everything, we can look at how the system's performing the day we installed it versus five years down the track and clearly see if there's any issues there just, just from that, just from, from our uh, office. Uh, and then if there's an issue, we can contact the customer often will do that is actually see that there's an issue before the customer's even seen it and um, we can contact them and say can uh, can we arrange an inspection to have a look and uh, so your apex solar you actually the systems you sell you monitor and you pick up anomalies and you would then actually take the initiative to call the customer would you yeah we do that fairly regularly so oh. we're, we're continually looking the systems tell us if they've got faults and if there's faults there we're often then having a look at it and seeing if it is actually an installation fault. Most of the time the faults come back to someone's changed their internet. <laughs> um, and uh, look, we're often, we'll help them guide guide through reconnecting their internet right. system as well. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not a rare, it's a rare occurrence that there are system faults, mm. um, but it's good to have that ability to, to see that and action it quickly. Okay. Now, um, Door knockers sometimes give you really good solar bargains. Are there still solar sharks around and solar cowboys? Oh. I think so. I've never had one at my door. But <laughs> um, no, look, we, we do see that. We, we hear people say that, uh, you know, someone's been knocking on the door. Funnily enough, it either seems to be they're selling a dirt cheap system or a system that's three times the price of what it should be. Still the dirt cheap system quality-wise, but... Oh, sorry, correct, yes. <laughs> it's the price three times That's what it right. should be. That's they're, yeah. they're selling cheap systems generally <laughs> that are very cheap price or a very exorbitant price. To people who are unsuspecting. Exactly. Which is really nasty. Yeah. Mm. So I, we're not obviously in that business. Mm. Uh, most of our system, uh, most of our customers are people that have come to us, of course. We're not going out there knocking on doors. I certainly mm. don't go do knocking on doors. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, uh, we're always happy to, we, we do get people that regularly have had someone in the area, um, at the moment it is batteries saying, we're going to give you a great deal on some batteries and, uh, they might be our customer that's had solar installed by us in the past. They come back to us for some advice and we're offer, or more than happy to offer mm. at least an opinion on possibly what they've been promised by someone else and if there's any merit in doing that or, or looking at mm. a, uh, an option from us. Look, my personal advice is when you see those battery specials, especially mm. the ones they offer on a trial, it's not a trial. You're just a bunny and usually the systems that are in the batteries are either very small and not really sized for the right size or the quality of the battery that is sold, even so it has maybe a very fabulous name, it might just be rebatched junk. And my personal opinion is that battery, even more than a solar, you really need solid backup. And a lot of those door knocking companies are just there for five minutes and they're never to be come back. So the problem is you're buying a system and then not from you, but then they have to come back to you to ask you to fix it. Yeah, sadly that is the case. <laughs> Batteries, you are correct. There's a lot more. Um, there's a lot more. Let's not say moving parts, but there's a lot more things that can go wrong. And especially do go wrong if it's with poorly installed. Yeah. If it's stuffed installed in the first place, if the BDM is not properly yeah. programmed, you are going to have problems. And what? How do you feel when people say, "Oh, yeah, you were a bit expensive. I didn't use you," and but can you fix me now? <laughs> 
I, I think that's a Tim special. <laughs> do, do you, does your fat face get a little bit red at that It moment? does, it does, it does. A bit of steam comes out of the ears, Oh, come on, Tim. You've got to be nice and gentle. <laughs> they didn't know any better. No, I know. Sadly. I bet Gemma tells you just calm down, is it? Sometimes. <laughs> but what do you do, seriously? Let's say a pensioner went, got dumbed up, got drummed up, not dumbed up, got drummed up by some door knockers, was silly enough to sign, overpaid the system, it's now not working, the door knocking company doesn't come back. You're the only ha- helper and saviour. What are you going to do? Look, we'll try and help as much as we can, but it's pretty hard um, with these systems. A lot of them, there, there's no support there. So we we haven't, we're not the manufacturer. Even from the manufacturer, exactly, you mean? Oh, exactly. Oh, so that's a lot of these systems, we've seen it. You, you, they come out all guns blazing, promising you the world, and then a couple of years later, they no no longer exist. And so the company that installed it is no more and and the company that manufactured it is no more. So there, there is no support. There's nothing that can really be done um, and you've got what you paid for. You can't go in your shed on a Saturday and twinker about with it? Sadly, no. Sadly, no. I'm not getting the soldering iron out. There's not much we can do with those things. All right. Just thought I'd try. <laughs> <laughs> Panel position. Do you just whack them on it anywhere? It's a good roof. Let's put it on or is there something we should think about? <laughs> No, there's always something. Look, obviously the roof that you have will dictate largely where we can install panels. Um, there are obviously options uh, with a lot of places where we put them and that might come down to aesthetic preference from a customer. A lot of people say, well, we don't want to see them mm. on the roof when we come in the house. Um, as as much as um, people, some people may say, we'll ask the questions, when are you likely to use your power? Are you morning people or are you evening people? Okay, and I come home at 3 o'clock and I want my air conditioning working. Hmm. What do you recommend? We'll be putting them on the west or the north. So that's the afternoon sun that's catching the afternoon there. That's going to give you maximum power when you come home and flick that air conditioning on at 3 o'clock. Hmm. Hmm. What about looks? Um, that's getting more and more important. Do you sometimes install full black panels? We absolutely install black panels panels the panels overall are now more relatively black, black mm, mm. compared to the old silver and blue days mm, mm. Um, so panels are black black now but of course if we go to the the REC alpha pures they're an all, all black panel we can put some all black railing on so you get a very nice aesthetic look on the roof and then try and balance them as well so that then there's not a, a dog's breakfast of panels all, all mm. over the roof there. So it is important. It's your home. It's where you live and um, it's it's quite visual. So we do take pride in how we install the panels and try and make them fit in with your home as best as possible. So you can give me a black panel with black rails uh, installed symmetrically to make it look as best as possible? If that's an important consideration, of course we can. <laughs> okay. Well, I think for most people nowadays it is because, I mean, I say to people, why spend $500 a quarter to get savings with solar and make the home $30,000 uglier? Yes. Makes no sense. No, exactly. Yeah, go for a good-looking system mm-hmm. installed by a good-looking installer. Oh, that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tim, couldn't help it. Um, <laughs> some systems possibly have shade and stuff. What's your solution there? Chop the tree down. Oh, you, you, I can't say that. That's not that's that, not environmentally friendly. That was a joke, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, of course, shading. The the best solution is is to avoid the shade. So, if there's any option to locate the panels where we can minimise the shade, that's the first and preferred option. But there are many um, technologies out there to cater for the shading. Now, um, the inverters alone have got much better software and algorithms built in. The panels, split panels, um, are able do deal with shading better, plus uh, micro-inverters, DC optimizers. There's lots of options out there to to maximise how your system will perform if shading is an issue. Now, there was always that kind of argument between Solar Edge and Enphase and a Tygo as well. Which is the solution that you specifically push because and why? We probably aim toward Tygo's more. Um, we do deal with Enphase as well. So uh, it's a, it's they're both good quality products. Um, and once again, it comes down to customer 
specific circumstances. And budgets. Of course. Mm-hmm. So the, the Tigos, Tigos, Tigos. Tigos are great because we don't need to necessarily install them on every single panel mm. to counteract a shading issue. But the light Enfo system likewise is fantastic. You've got obviously AC microinverters and panel level monitoring um, as standard. But um, yeah, budget is also a major part of that. So so basically if the customer says, look, cost is not an issue, I want the latest ANTS pants, you come up with slightly maybe a different solution where somebody says, look, I want a really stable system, but I'm also having a budget. Absolutely. So you can cater for any customer. Right. Yeah. Okay, got it. Now, something somewhere must have gone wrong one time in your 20 years of running the company. Maybe a sales guy looked at a switchboard and thought it was single phase, but it ended up three phase and they picked the wrong inverter in the morning at the install, something like that. How do you handle with those things? <laughs> Does it ever happen? No, I was just, I'm just trying, racking my brain for oh, when that possibly on. has occurred. <laughs> oh, look, anything, sadly, we're all human and we do all make mistakes, but uh, look, we've, we've been doing it long enough now we can, it's, we we do our best, and we if we make a mistake, we'll we'll rectify it. Um, a lot of it is just very simple things, like we might not have for, we've forgotten to put a note in for the installation team. Um, look, they're a great bunch of guys; they they're used to it as well. So we all work really well as a team, and get the job done and make sure it's done so, done well. And so let's say in the morning the team arrives. They've picked up something is slightly different. The gear has to be changed a little bit and maybe there's a small cost increase. Not the customer's fault. Would you then carry that? Yeah. If it's our fault, of course we have to carry that cost. We can't We can't um, expect the customer to front up for our faults. So. Oh, you could come up with a really creative story. <laughs> I'm not good at telling creative stories, so we just uh, – its simp- this, the truth is a simple answer. <laughs> so you just basically cop it and tell the customer this is maybe what happened. We've got to go back and grab this piece. And Absolutely. On, on, yeah, yeah look, that's it. And most people understand and appreciate just being told the truth and um, – it, as long as the system is, we're putting in a system that's going to be there for twenty years. If it's a day or two late, because we've done, we've we've messed something up. I'd rather Get it fix right. it properly mm. than than um, cut some corners and it'll come back to bite us. And look, I always say when you make a mistake, if you learn from it, it was a training exercise. If you don't learn from it, it was a stuff up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, when it comes to the warranties with solar, they're now getting longer and longer. It gets very confusing. How do they work? 25-year warranties and 30-year warranties, it's a long time, isn't it? Yeah. I agree. Um, look, at the end of the day, our customers, we say, if there's an issue with your system ever, you call us, first of all. that's the, we're, your, we're your number one contact for any issues with, with the equipment or the installation. Mm. So that's our recommendation. Um, first of all, I always tell everyone, look, if we win the lotto or get run over by a bus, the manufacturers we select and the products we use, they do have uh, Australian offices here, which is important. And you can go to those companies directly and they will honour your warranty themselves. But always come to us. We're the number one point of contact and we'll then act on behalf of the manufacturer to get that resolved for you. But you see the cheaper companies will give a very different answer because they basically say, don't ring me, ring the manufacturer. I don't want to know about it. So you giving the really solid after-sales service is really what the difference is. Of course it is. I mean, that's that's what the cost difference is really. After-sales service, it has a value and it's built into our quotes and it's um, we we stand by it. Uh, that's why how we get our word of mouth referrals. Mm. It's uh, it's yeah. Anyone can install a solar system, but it's what happens when something goes wrong, how that's dealt with, and in a timely way. That just we just want to keep people keep people's systems operational and keep a happy customer. I take a bit of exception when you say everybody can install a solar system <laughs> because I've seen some installed that I wouldn't have actually called it was an installation. It was more like a stuck-on thing. Sticky tape to a roof. I've yeah. seen even um, the one where they put bricks on the uh, solar panels to keep them on the roof, uh, the last few where they rang out of clamps. So some solutions are a little bit more painful than others. That's right. Mm, yeah. 
Now, let's say I'm a customer in your region and I'm researching solar. What are the kind of three key tips other than buy from Apex Solar <laughs> that you would give somebody really genuine experience, 20 years worth of experience kind of tips? Well, know what know what you're looking for, okay? So the solar systems now, there's, there's a lot of questions that we'll be asking you as to what you need out of the system, what you're expecting out of it. So do you, do some research and also have a think, try and narrow down what it is you're, what you're looking for and what you want it to do now and in the future. Um, that's, that's that side of things. You've obviously got your budget, okay? So shop around, ask some questions, do some Google research, and then we're happy to give you our opinions on, on the equipment as well. Um, but I tell you now, guys, the $2,990 special, you'll have to ring Tim back in two or three years and ask him for a proper solar system. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> I've seen it too many times. Yeah, I know. We, I mean, we there's, have. there's now 700,000 plus orphan solar system in Australia out of the 3.5 million, over 20%, where the company who's installed it is not around or the manufacturer who supplied the product is not around. And so therefore those systems are useless. And they're usually of the budget variety advertised by large companies who then a couple of years later change into a different company and never to be found again. Yes. And we've learned the lesson, but unfortunately new customers don't know that. They just believe all the money. That's right. They're the installation companies, not the ongoing support companies. Yeah, or solar cowboys. Yeah. Yes. Now, let's say if you start, um, I've decided I like what Apex Solar's given me in the quote, and I want to go ahead with you, but I want to understand what you're actually going to do. Are you guys going to be in my house for two weeks drilling and hammering or tell me the process? We certainly should be, shouldn't be there for two weeks. Most of our installations are one to two days um, present, depending on size and complexity. We'll usually know uh, pretty clearly how long it's going to take and give you um, uh, an estimate of how long we'll be there for. And what we'll need, um, we're happy to work in with people to, of course, to suit scheduling. Not everyone's available all the time. And uh, it's obviously we're very weather dependent in what we do. So we need some good weather <laughs> to be there mm. on your door in the morning. But, uh, no, we, we um, have a great administration crew and they uh, will keep that process clear and informed but, to keep but you. But practically you turn up, you whack the panels on first or you do the inverter first. What's the steps? We're doing it all at the same time, really. Ah, so you've got a large <laughs> got, enough crew. Have yeah, you? yeah, yeah. We've got um, enough guys. We'll usually be um, tackling bits and pieces at the same time. So we'll be installing the DC run, the inverter, the panels. Um, while and, while somebody, somebody works on the inverter while another part of the crew is already on the roof. Yeah, correct. And that way you can potentially do most installs if it's not a battery within a day, is yep, it? Yeah, yeah. Right, we usually right. look to get most installs done and dusted in a day. Mm -hmm. Are there some more complicated installs like an off-grid and all that that could take a bit longer than a day? Absolutely. So what's the story there? Uh, well, look, we get an idea of what's involved. Obviously, large systems, many, many panels will, will take longer. Multi-story systems may take longer, but um, we'll give uh, usually even at initial site inspection stage or quoting stage uh, feedback that this system is going to take X amount of days to install if that's the case and uh, just make that abundantly clear to, to the customer. Mm. And with off-grids, there's things like generators and there's things like that you've got to program them that they automatically start so the petrol doesn't get old. Is this all stuff you, you really care about or the customer got to work that out themselves? No, we do all that. We don't want, uh, we don't want the customer having to worry about any of that stuff. Um, our off-grid systems now, once there's an internet connection, we can have a look and see is the gener when, when did the generator last start and um, we can have scheduled run times. We can do all sorts of things uh, automated and remotely. So it makes uh, the off-grid systems, which used to be a lot more... <sighs> A lot more problematic. It makes it simplifies things greatly. So mm -hmm. and it make it makes things very easy for the end customer. There's not they all they really have to do is service the generator. That's the largest component that they need to worry about, making sure there's fuel in the generator and, and changing the oil every once in a while. 
So would you argue that there are off-grid systems around that you installed that people haven't worried about for as long as five years? Yes, absolutely. We, um, When we get some bad weather in winter, which we just recently had for the first time in many years, uh, people have been calling saying, our generator is fired up. <laughs> What's happening there? And you go, yeah, you know, it's meant to do that. And they're like, it, they've been running for years and years, and the generators. They didn't even know the noise exists. Down That's there. right. They're <laughs> like, "What's that? What's that? What's that? That's the generator." So, yeah, no. Uh, we, the, the, we, we had two weeks of rain. Yes, yes, and in in the um, winter months, and all yeah. of a sudden, mm. it's, instead of the sunshine which we normally get, it's mm. Uh, mm. yeah. You, you so you, the off grid customers are very. Very much aware of what the weather's doing. It seems to be when I mention the word solar and battery, I get kind of a smiling Tim. But when I mention the word off-grid, you really start to beam. You seem to like off-grid a lot, do you? Well, that's what I started doing. That's that's what I that's what I dabbled my toes in way back when. And look, I, I love um, yeah. It's it's a niche little industry still. I suppose you don't get the door knockers for off grid, <laughs> oh, and no. it's great being able to give someone like that that full energy independence and be able to run oh, look three phase EV charging nowadays. If you mm. really wanted it an off grid, you can get an off grid system which can give you so much more than you can get from the grid. Mm. Uh, mm. Huge systems if you wanted to. So so much flexibility and just the yeah great technology and being able to really get in you you it's not a rubber stamp with right, an off-grid right. system you're getting um you're more involved with the end customer from sort of the start to the end and that relationship carries on more because people are often coming back saying you know mm. we need um a new generator or <laughs> some larger batteries and can we can we look at upgrading that or changing that over so well they depend on you a lot because basically you're their we're power the station supply. Ex exactly, you know? exactly. But what I normally say, if somebody's good enough to design an off-grid system, you normally get from that company a very good, reliable residential because the cheap and cheerful residential system people, they don't normally touch off-grid. It's all too complicated. Yeah, correct. So if you get a good off-grid operator, you normally get in very safe hand for your residential. That's right. There's a lot more. There's a lot more technology and things to go wrong in an off-grid system. Mm. So having that sort of background and experience has done us very well for the on-grid mm. domestic systems. Now, i got a good question. You've got obviously to feed your family, make a good profit and all that. So you walk in somewhere, they've got a roof that is a 10 kilowatt size system roof, but possibly from their consumption, they only need a 6 kilowatt. Wouldn't mm. it make you a bit more money to recommend a 10 kilowatt to them? A little, but look, it's what, uh, what, it's. what are you going to recommend? Well, I'm going to recommend the system that suits them that they need. Oh. Um, having having a large having. I'm your, a, I'm your accountant. Right? <laughs> <laughs> look, we're putting in the right system because then they're going to see how well it works and get their value for money and recommend their friends to us. So that's what we're going to do. So long term, you're going to be getting a better business model. Exactly. Going. We've, we've lost $500 there, but we've gained another three installs over there. Okay, good. And I thought I'd just tempt you there. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of people actually got you to, oh, yeah, maybe 10. Look, we do see <laughs> the large companies have come out and said, look, put this massive system on for your 12 kilowatt hour a day power bill. And you go, "That's uh, we could do that, but really you, we can't recommend it. Because you're just exporting that solar for nothing. If you can export it, a lot of these customers, mm. I mean, essentially, limited, yeah, yeah, you've got an exp exportation limit. The system's yeah. sitting there just ticking over, not doing anything. Yeah, right, okay. fair enough. And more panels to wash. Mm. Mm. Okay. EVs are coming. I don't know if they're coming in your part of the world faster. Absolutely. But um, how is that all going to change solar? You've got a massive additional energy load there. Um, it very much depends. An EV is... Um, going to be very different if you're driving it just down to the shops once a week or mm. if you're driving it several hundred kilometres. So that energy ideally will come from your solar system at home that will cost you nothing that's going to keep 
the make make the appeal of the EV much higher because that ongoing running costs are minimised. Um, but what it means, of course, it's this is the the system getting the questions and the answers right at the beginning to size that system and scale it. So you've got the options to be able to charge your EV on a single phase or a three phase, and ideally do it in an intelligent way. That is with your solar, your excess solar, and instead of trying to sell that back to the grid for a pittance, divert that into your EV and charge that up and have a fully integrated system mm. that is smart and intelligent. So the EV charge is now bound. They only top up your car battery when there's spare solar. So you kind of completely can charge your car just from the solar. Absolutely. Mm. That's what we aim to do for a lot of people mm. is give them a fully integrated system that monitors and it knows what it's doing and when it sees that additional solar power there, it's able to then send that over to your car and charge that while it's sitting there. And look, you can be in V8 head as much as you like. The truth is I think EVs fast forward 10, 15, 20 years will be the way that we go. I mean, there's still an argument hydrogen here and there, but I mean, the EV technology is now coming through and also at price points uh, that EVs are becoming very competitive. Well, that's right. They're here now and we've got a lot of customers already that have got them, we've installed them, we've installed the EV chargers for them. They're, they're operating uh, on an, in a you know very great little space where they're fully self-sufficient, including their vehicle. Mm. Which is another $2,500 average on petrol costs mm. a year that you could exactly. save. Mm. So your, your power station and or your oil refinery all in one now. So at that point in time, if you start looking at a solar system and have an EV, then getting solar and battery, the payback isn't actually potentially that long. If you get an amber type system as well in the trading, you're probably looking five, six years for your solar battery. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we've got customers that have had a battery system in for a few years and they can look and they can see that they're, they're very close to payback already. Mm. It's it's different for everyone, but um, look, the payback is there for sure, well within the in the lifespan of the system now. Mm -hmm. I hear you recommend RSC panels. I've got that, I saw that on your website. What's good about them? The technology. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they've got um, it's there's there's a lot of there's a lot of technology that goes in. A lot of it's over my head, but look, their performance. It's really how they perform, um, the longevity of them. So for for our customers, the the key things really is their long term performance or loss of performance. The degradation of the panel is absolutely minimal on on the REC Alpha series versus nearly everything else, uh, and it's also their the the efficiency of the panel is. At the top, it's the peak peak of the bunch, peak of the bunch. Mm. Right at the top, um, you get fantastic overall efficiency in sun and shade, more than nearly any other panel on the market. And I think they're made in Singapore, not in China. Is made it? in Singapore, one of the one of the handful of panels outside of China. Mm. Okay, just asking. Now, with inverter solutions, what? brands do you recommend there for residential? We're recommending Fronius and SunGrow inverters for our residential customers. Um, they are our tried and tested products with great support and really fantastic long-term reliability. Right. I hear SunGrow now also bringing out hybrids, uh, which might even be down the track useful for off-grid. Have you heard anything about that? We have some customers with SunGrows running in off-grid now. Oh. Yeah, so they are a great little unit, a very good um, value for money with really good quality, reliability. It's uh, it's all the one brand as well, SunGrow Inverter, SunGrow Battery. There's zero finger pointing as to whose fault it may be should there be any issues mm, <laughs> with, mm, the, mm. with the communication, et cetera. Um, not that we really get that with others, but that is, that is a, another little bonus there for them. So, yeah, they are a really great uh, system overall. Mm. Now, you've been in solar really from the very early days. You would have seen a lot of changes, panels getting cheaper, batteries coming through. What do you think the next three to five years are holding in that whole game? Oh, I think more electrification and people moving away from, from gas hot water, gas heating, uh, moving to EVs, um, the smart homes we discussed earlier, and yeah, larger solar systems with more features and abilities and future-proofing options that are built in. 
out of the box ready to go with with the capability to really customize it to suit individuals not a not a one-size-fits-all approach mm -hmm. I always personally believe if you live in a community, then using the businesses within that community is a smart move because people don't have to travel, you know, half a day to get to you and they're willing to come to you in those cases. Are you kind of like an embedded community kind of company or how do you, do you sponsor anything locally? Do you put a couple of bucks in your local <laughs> soccer team or something like that? I mean, why would I call you, why would I call Apex Solar a local company? Well, we've been in our little area for many, many years now. Um, we we are regional and we find our business as well as a lot of other local small businesses, we like to keep things local. So if you've got the option to shop local, we do that uh, as, as far as our customers and also us as as personal consumers and a small business we always try and partner up with local companies you get you know keep keep the local keep the local dollar local that's right keep <laughs> and, the local and, and what about your employees are they they assume they are locals yeah they're all very local so you feed them. locals yep. you serve locals no, we've we have no FIFO workers. They're all they're all local guys. <laughs> no fly-ins. <laughs> no fly-ins. No, I don't think you're paying mine's wages either. No, so no, you sadly. Can't. Yeah, no, fair enough. Some people can't really afford to buy a solar system up front and have to finance. What's your opinion on solar finance? It's not free. It's finance. It's a third party. So so first thing when people say I give you free solar finance, you're claiming that that's a false claim, is it? Yes. Because what they do is they take the interest and bundle it in the price. So usually it's cheap, crappy stuff. Then the interest goes up on top of it. So then it's a middle price product. So you think I'm not getting too bad, but you're actually paying for the interest. Of course you are. It's um, no one's giving away money. So if anyone, it's that if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Mm. So finance is available. We offer it. There's uh, always fees and costs associated with finance, uh, but absolutely people are not always in the position to stump up that money right at the beginning for an investment like solar or, or batteries. But um, having the option to, to add finance can make it viable for certain people. I mean, look, even with finance at the current interest rate, some people will still, by buying solar, paying it off in finance, will still have savings. Absolutely. So it can still work. It can still work for sure. Uh, when when interest rates were next to nothing, it was even better. But of course, mm. um, yeah, the prices of power continue to rise, and uh, having a having a finance solar system can still be viable. Mm. Mm. Are there particular jobs that you're actually really proud of? Yeah, absolutely. I think some of our some of our most recent ones when we can see customers that have had a battery system with some solar panels and some backup power and an EV charger installed. And a couple of years down the track, we can look at that system and say that customer's got 97% self-sufficiency from their solar energy system. So 3% is all they've been purchasing from the grid in that time. So they're better than a lot of off-grid customers, to be fair. Um, and it's great that they are running a vehicle in their entire home in the high 90% self-sufficiencies now. And this is not there's, – there's at least two or three of these um, that I can think of off the top of my head. So, so your system sizing was then basically a bullseye. Mm, you it's good them, to get it right sometimes. <laughs> you gave them the right system, yeah. meaning they didn't overpay by building one that is too big and they didn't need it. And not a small one where they couldn't bake a cake on a wintry day because That's right. yeah, wow, that yeah. that would make you happy. It does, and it's it's um these systems are giving me kind of that same achievement so as, that's as the off grids because it's it's it, we are looking at that entire consumption, not just trying to run the dishwasher in the daytime, which is still important. But seeing someone be be almost a hundred percent self-sufficient is fantastic. That means, you know, obviously they're over the moon at how the system's performing and how their bills are basically non-existent now. Um, so, yeah, no no petrol bills, no energy bills, um, yeah. And so, so your customers' low bills give you the kicks 
not the local pokies. <laughs> <laughs> no, the pokies don't do much for me. No, it's it's great, and um, you know a lot of these customers they're in they're in you know, semi regular contact, looking at changing EVs, for example. Mm. I spoke to someone the other day, he's changed from from one brand to another one, and just had some questions about the charger. So yeah, we're able to answer that and look at tweaking it to suit suit the new vehicle. And you don't charge him for your advice time? No. Mm. Okay. Not always. <laughs> Do you <laughs> now? Um, okay, so you're happy with you're kind of quite proud of that. The downside must be you got a customer, you gave them good advice, you gave them a fair price, you recommended a solid system, and then they still went with the cheap solution. That then fails, and now they ring you to save them. Do we get the mild minute, Tim? <laughs> Look, generally, we can make anything work where anything's possible, but sadly, it's probably going to cost them a lot more than but, if they just did it well and right in the first place. I know this is a podcast and you want to say the right things, but don't inside if you go, oh, wait, I, I put you right, I put the horse in front of the water. Why didn't you drink it? It was a good solution. You could have had all these avoidance of these headaches. Doesn't that inner voice say that to you? Of course. But it, it's like, uh, yeah, when you're looking for the the cheapest of anything, it's not necessarily going to be the best. Um, and sadly, even a cheap solar system is not, it's not cheap, especially if it breaks and you've got to pull it all down or it causes some other damage. Um, it can easily, a cheap system can easily end up costing you an awful lot of money very quickly. And when the panels, let's say, have failed and they've got water ingress and all that and you pull them off, where do you put them? We often just have to take them to landfill, sadly, or scrap metal pace. Um, that's about all we can do with them these days. So from an environmental point of view, a lot of cheap systems don't really benefit the environment at all? Absolutely not. Not if they're only lasting, you know, a few years mm. until until they're expired and they need to be replaced. Mm. So, yeah, a, a decent quality system that stands the test of time, financial tick box and environmental Mm. as well. Do you do the sales or some well, you've got staff as well? Yeah, we've got a we've got a small crew. So I mm. I do quite a few, um, but we do have a team of sales guys. Mm. And people. if you come to my house, what's the first question is what do you ask me? What are you looking for? What are you, I I'm often obviously what what are you yeah, what kind of systems have you had solar before? Let's um, play the game. No, I've never had solar. I just want cheaper electricity bill. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, what, what are your bills presently? What Seven hundred dollars kind of... a quarter, and uh, I'm really worried that it'll go up. Okay. Why do you, why are you worried it'll go up? Are you using more power? Or is it no, just it's been going cost? up for the last three years. Everything goes up. <laughs> it does indeed. Well, that's the cost. Um, look, we'll we'll have a look. Then let's have a walk around the house and see what appliances you're using and. There's your air conditioner. How often do you use that? Are you running that all night long or is it just used in summertime, using it winter or a bit of both? Um, My roof is pretty rusty. Might have to have to replace that first, would I? Or can you put solar on a rusty roof? Well, I'd strongly recommend the roof gets done first before the solar panels go on. Otherwise, you're going to put them on, then you're going to have to take them back down. Two companies already on. said she'll be right. Well, that's up to you. What do you think? If uh, I, I was gonna... wondering, but then I thought, oh, maybe the solar panels patch the holes. Sadly, they're not built to do that. <laughs> All right. So you say get your roof fixed first before you think of solar. Make sure you've got a good sound roof first, for sure. Okay. Has there ever been a product where you kind of had a so-so feeling and somehow you got yourself talked into using it and then you go, I should have known better. This was Should have known stuff. better. Sadly, yes. Uh, look, over the years, we've tried a lot of different products, um, somewhat apprehensively initially, and a lot of those feelings, you're right, it's it's often just a bit of a vibe of the company and where it's where it's come from and, and the product as well. You can, we're, I'm an electrician by trade, so you can see and feel the quality of a product. Um, and then when you call up, even in the initial commissioning stage or you're trying to get online and get the app and there's issues there, the little alarm bells start ringing and you're going, well, I don't think we're going to get the support with this product that 
we would expect. And look, that's probably why it's very, very cheap. Very. <laughs> they're not paying for the bloke to sit in the office. Because that's right, and that's that's a cost, and a decent company, I suppose, that has to has to wear that cost, and but it gets passed on in the product because you do get that support down down the line, down the run. But now, after so many years, you kind of got your product mix pretty well mixed up. You're not doing this anymore, no. are you? We've narrowed it down. Look now, there now no doubt there will continue to be new and exciting products out there. We will potentially look down them, but we're doing it in a much more cautious way for sure. Let it be out on the market for two years and prove itself, is that <laughs> That'd it? That'd be lovely, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Tim, it's been great to find out about Apex Solar. I really enjoyed you explaining a lot of things and your love for off-grid and uh, really love to have you again one day. Thanks, Marcus. See you. So, uh, Gemma, you work for Apex Solar in the back office, in the front office, taking the calls. What do you do? Yes, um, just a bit of everything in the background. Um, I look after the team. Um, we're very lucky. We've got an excellent, um, smart, engaged team of installers and um, an amazing administrator. So I make sure that runs smoothly. I engage with suppliers, liaise with customers, um, yeah, everything apart from the actual installation itself. You said you have a motivated team of installers. I mean, I know installation teams that just want to get in and out as quick as possible, isn't it? What do you have? No, that's not the case with our guys. They are smart and they're careful and they really take pride in what they do. Um, we're a small business and our team is super important to us. So they're very much a part of the whole process. We have lots of conversations in the office with the installation team. They know everything that's going on with, with every single job. We have meetings to make sure that they are informed of everything they need to know before they go on site. Um, they are able to talk to customers, every single one of them, um, to answer any questions. They take their time to make sure that they do things right because invariably on the rare occasions that they don't, they end up being sent back to fix things anyway. So it's in their best interest to make sure that they do a good job. And we've just got a very happy team. Of so they are the apex ambassadors, are they? They are the apex <laughs> of employees. <laughs> <laughs> good, good to know. So basically you do get calls back where people say, oh, Johnny on the crew, he was really nice and he explained this to me and all that. Does that happen? We do. We do and it's my favourite part of the job. Um, we get emails from customers that specifically name drop, installers or our fantastic back office staff. Um, we get lots of positive feedback. All of our installers, are extremely well mannered they are well presented they do a great job and they really care about the business and the customers as well so the benefit of using a local installer we're, we're really invested in giving our customers a good experience um you say you get good reviews and all that google reviews where do you stand there um, we have great Google reviews, Google us, Apex Solar. <laughs> um, we, we do. Reviews are important, but I mean, it's just a reflection of our customer's experience with us, which mm. is the most important thing. Um, the benefits of using a local experience installer to have that cu a positive customer experience is absolutely invaluable. Um, solar is a really confusing space. There's lots of changing technology, lots of scaremongering from the from the media, lots of misinformation, and it's our job to talk customers through the realities and answer their questions and make sure that they're having the best experience possible. Right. So do you sometimes ring back after a job and double check that everything went well? Yeah, there's a huge process in terms of the installation, which isn't just being on site for the day. Mm -hmm. um, we check in with customers. We help them set up technology to monitor their solar systems. Um, and most importantly, we always make sure that they know that we're there to answer any questions they might have moving along down the track yeah and it might be something as simple as questions around technology not everybody knows how to use an app not everybody enjoys having to go on their phone and look at monitoring systems mm -hmm. and so we're absolutely there if customers want to call and and get that kind of support just mm -hmm. to help monitor if a customer wants to call in and have a chat about their first electricity bill post solar or their 10th electricity bill post solar we can always look at those for them we're always happy to jump onto the online monitoring and, and have a look and see what customer systems have been doing and simply explain the situation because there's a big difference for example in winter versus summer in the income levels and yes. the, um, the um, 
I was going to say manufacturing, but uh, the solar generation levels. So customers really, I suppose, sometimes can be confused. And what, you're the shining light to put uh, that clear? Well, the team <laughs> are the shining light to, to, to keep it clear. But we, we just like to make sure that we are available for customers to answer those kind of questions. There is no such thing as a silly question. If you have a question about a bill, we, we're there to talk you through it. Um, we do have customers call that, that are confused if they're not seeing the savings they were expected, but the power prices are going up so much at the moment, you know, we, we can talk them through their consumption and how they're using their solar to make sure they're doing it in the best possible way. Mm. And also making sure that, that, you know, they understand the return of investment the return on investment from your solar now isn't about selling back to the grid. It's about your consumption and how you're using that energy yourself to to, to benefit your. So, so you want to put your pool pump during the day. You want to pre-cool your house. You want to put your washing machine on when you leave in the morning, not two hours before you had breakfast. And your dishwasher, don't put it on after the dinner party, but wait for the morning and turn it on. Is that about yeah. the solution? You're not going to see the savings that you want if you're running your air conditioner all night. Mm. Um, and it's some really simple things that I think some people take for granted. You know, you can't assume that your customers know that that's how your solar works. Mm. So it's important for us to talk those things through to make sure that they're going to get the very best out mm. of their solar. Mm. 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 Have there been situations where you've rung a customer and they gave you feedback on the crew or other things, what they didn't understand that you then took on board and it becomes part of the process? Yeah, I mean, everything is a learning experience, um, making sure that the crew are knowledgeable enough to be able to talk to customers on site. Probably the most important thing being if they're not knowledgeable enough to answer a particular question to refer back to Tim um, or, or, or to Dan. Um, and just being, you know, absolutely honest with our customers about what we can deliver and what we can provide for them. Sometimes the most honest answer is actually to say, I don't know, but yeah. I'll double check, isn't it? And that's the most important thing. And if a member of the Apex team doesn't know something, mm. they will refer back to Tim. And, you know, if Tim doesn't know something, then we'll refer back to a supplier or to a manufacturer. Um, solar is so fast paced in terms of the technology changing. Mm. It's important that we keep up to date with what's going on. Um, so we always make sure that we, we are able to provide the answers to those questions in mm. the best possible way. Mm. So you kind of like in the office, take the phone calls, ring back and forwards. What kind of gives you the biggest satisfaction? I just, hearing all the positive reviews about the team for me, that's the most important thing. We, you know, our, our guys stay with us for a long time. We, we have apprentices who we who come through with us all the way through their apprenticeships and, and are now qualified electricians working, installing solar for us. So to see them grow and to see um, and hear positive experiences from our customers, that's the most important thing. We work really hard to uphold a certain level of quality and service. And so to have that fed back to us, I would say that's that's pretty good. Sounds like a great family atmosphere. It's a very strong family team. So, mm. yeah. we're. So if you're an apprentice in your part of the world, they're probably quite lucky to end up with you. Oh, I think so. <laughs> I'd like to think so. I'd like to think we try and make a, a, a positive working environment for everybody and then they go and do a really good job for us. So mm. okay, good. Good, good, good. Um, Sola, how long have you been kind of supporting Tim in that role? How long have you been in? Probably, I mean, Tim was in the solar world before we met. You know, Tim, Tim's Tim been um, doing solar on the mid-north coast for over 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, so he was very much in flight with it b before we met. Um, I've been actively involved in the business now probably for around the last eight years. Um, so still seeing lots of changes and so lots of So you growth. came from overseas or what's the yes, story? Yes, from the UK, so the motherland. So how is uh, going from the UK to uh, the north, mid-north coast? Very different, um, but it's amazing and I love where we live. The mid-north coast is such an amazing um, area of Australia and we have a wonderfully diverse range of customers and locations and properties that we, that we work with. So... You kind of uh, love it. Were you a traveller and you got stuck in Australia or what? I was not a traveller. I was, well, I, I came to Australia for work and I actually met Tim in Singapore on the way over to Australia. Um, what, and just in the airport? 
Yes, we'll say yes. <laughs> no, um, so, no, no, look, by I'm chance. Just, look, look, I mean, solar installers normally are a lot of times in roofs and it's not yeah. really easy for them to meet somebody, you know, kind of <laughs> type thing. So he's convinced you to stay. You seem to be really happy in the yes. team, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, he, he ha- must have had a bit of persuasive power there. That's all. We have built an amazing business together, which is very satisfying. And yeah, we have um, a wonderful family now and we're very embedded in the mid-north coast of Australia. So Mm. it's good. I heard Tim is now very much the minority because you've got two girls. Yes. The cat is female. Yes. Even the cow ha- only gives female lambs or something or whatever. And, and which all of his friends think is hilarious. So, yes, Tim is very outnumbered by women um, in at home. Um, but, you know, we have a nice mixed team in work. So it brings the gentle element out of him, doesn't it? Yes. Mm. And that's what you need in solo. You need patience. And he is He's very patient. He is um, hearing him talk to our customers on the phone. He has time for everybody. Um, he he will sit and and for half an hour on the phone to talk about questions from someone that doesn't understand solar or somebody who has been given misinformation by a bigger solar company or a salesperson. You know, he he will always give the time to sort of unwind any of those concerns or questions and do the best for for the customers in terms of recommending the right products and the right size systems and to make sure that they're getting the most for their money. Look, from all I can tell here, whoever ends up with Apex Solar, lucky. Oh, I hope so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.